أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين أما بعد قد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة التوبة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي جاهد الكفار والمنافقين واغلظ عليهم ومأواهم جهنم وبئس المصير صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقبة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا ألهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من النفاق والرياء اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وألسنتنا من الكذب وعيننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور آمين يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are starting with ayah number 73 of Surah Al-Tawbah today I've just recited the ayah to you this is one of the very few ayat of the Qur'an which appear repeatedly in the Qur'an in exactly the same words. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ جَاهِدِ الْكُفَّارَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ وَغْلُزْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَمَعْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ وَبِيسَ الْمَصِيرِ This ayah appears in Surah Al-Tahreem also. Ayah number 8 of Surah Al-Tahreem, exactly the same words without the difference of a dot or a jot, nothing of difference at all. Now I told you that one of the main themes of Surah Al-Tawbah and one of the main purposes of the expedition of Tabuk were to expose the Munafiqeen now, because it was now late, you know, it was ninth year after Hijrah. And the mission of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had already been accomplished as far as the Arabian Peninsula was concerned, Allah's deen was dominant. So now it was high time to expose this fifth columnist part of the society, section of the society, element of the society. So they were, number one, they were exposed because, you know, it was made obligatory for every mu'min to participate in this expedition. This was the first time. Before that, it was all persuasion. Persuasion, persuasion. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu, harrezil mu'minin alul qital. You motivate them, exhort them. It's better for them to go and fight for the cause of Allah. They will get the reward, you know, in the hereafter. They should rest assured. But it was not made obligatory for every mu'min to go with the Prophet or out, out you know, to fight for the cause of Allah. This was the first time. This we call nafir e aam Every Muslim had to go. Now, whosoever didn't go, he was exposed in the first instance. Then there were people who made very lame excuses. Now, Muslims knew in this society what they are saying it is not correct. So, even though the Prophet accepted their lame excuses, okay, if it is so, okay, you are exempted. 
But you know the people around, the neighbors, they knew what Bhavar is saying is wrong. He's just, he's healthy and he's resourceful. He can spend money, everything. There's no impediment in his way. So people came to know of the, of those people, you know, who were the liars, who were not sincere in their iman. This way they were exposed. Number two, you will find these harsh words now here for, for Munafiqeen and the harshest also will come in this very discourse. And that is, Ya Yuhan Nabiyu Jahidi Al-Kuffara Wal Munafiqeen Wa Ghuz Alayhim. As I told you many a time, that as far as this world is concerned, the Munafiqeen are bracketed with Mu'mineen. Ya Yuhan Nabiyu Amanu. They were also legal Muslims. But in this ayah, in this world, also, they have been bracketed with kuffar. O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, strive against, uh, strive hard against the, the unbelievers, disbelievers, the rejectors of the faith, as well as these hypocrites. Walk loose on him and be harsh to them. You are lenient by very nature, but you shouldn't be lenient to them. Now, because it's the matter of the deen of Allah, so you have to be harsh to them. jahannam, And their abode is the hell, Wabais al masir and it's a very bad and evil destination. This ayah, as I told you, is repeated in Surah Al-Tahreem in exactly the same verse. billahi maqalu. They are swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they didn't so, they didn't say so. But these things are not detailed here. We find these things in Suratul Munafiqoon, you know, in the 28th section, 28th part of, of Quran and Majid. The, the, the two sayings which are given over there. يَقُولُونَ لَا يَرْجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَا يُخْرِجَنَّ الْعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْعَزَلْ وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ so that these were some of the sayings of these people, Abdullah ibn Ubay. We shall read them, inshallah, when we reach there. But when explanation was called, did you say so? They said, no. My God, I swear by Allah, I never said so. He must have misunderstood. Or he is a mischief monger, whosoever has, you know, conveyed it to you. يَحَلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا قَالُوا وَلَقَدْ قَالُوا كَلِمَةَ الْكُفْرِ they have actually said and uttered those words which amount, which amount to blasphemy. And they have really returned to kufr after their Islam. Now, they have, here the word Islam is used, not Iman. Legal Islam, that is the cover. Although they have this cover over them to hide their hypocrisy, but beneath this cover, they have actually gone back to kufr. وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِسْلَامِ وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا And they tried what they didn't, they, they couldn't achieve. This refers to an incident that when on his way back to Medina from Tabuk, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was passing through a narrow valley, very narrow, very narrow. There you know some hypocrites, they hid and they assaulted. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because the valley was very narrow, you know, the formation was very narrow, cylinder formation, not many people going side by side. So at that time, some of these munafiqis, they attacked and assaulted him, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. So they did it. They also knew that now, you know, our end is near. We are being exposed, and the attitude is going to be now strict. All the leniency that we have been enjoying of the Prophet ﷺ, it seems, you know, that that period is going to, to end now. So they also tried, you know, their final act of trying to assassinate Muhammad ﷺ while on his way back to Medina. They tried it, what they didn't achieve. وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ and they were not avenging of anything except that Allah and His Messenger have made them rich by the bounty of Allah. Why? You know, because one of the items on which zakah can be spent was وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبِهِمْ 
So to suffer the hearts of people, you know, who are important, who hold important positions in the society. And if, you know, they oppose, they can do much mischief. So zakah was given to them. And these people, some of the chiefs, you know, these munafiqeen of Asad Khadraj, they had enjoyed that position. So by having that money from zakah, now they had become rich. Now they are avenging. Because Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam have made them rich out of the bounty of Allah min fadlihi. وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا نَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ فَإِنْ يَتُوبُ يَتُخَلَّ اللَّهُمْ Now if they repent and mend their ways, it will be better for them. وَيَتَوَلَّوْا And if they turn away, if they continue the attitude that they have been taking up till now, يُعَذِّبْهُمُ اللَّهُ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Now Allah will give them very painful torment and chastisement in this world also and in akhirah, in hereafter also. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَسِيرٍ And there is none in the whole of the earth who can be their protector or helper. So this is a very stern warning. وَمِنْهُ مَنْ آهَدَ اللَّهِ Now these three ayat, 75, 76, 78, 77, they also apply 100% to the Pakistani Muslim Ummah. 100%. And they are very important. Very important. A certain type of hypocrites, they are being described here. There are different types of hypocrites, different levels. Different grades, different types. Now, one particular type of hypocrites, they are being diagnosed here. What was the reason? Why they became munafik? Among them are those who had a covenant with Allah. If Allah gives us from His bounty, he makes us rich, wealthy. لَنَصَدَّقَنَّ We shall give charities and arms and we shall spend that money for the pleasure of Allah. وَلَنَكُولَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And we shall be most pious and righteous people. Now the second ayah, فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ When Allah gave them from His bounty, made them rich, wealthy, now they acted miserly with it, niggardly with it. They closed the doors of their safes, hoarding. And they turned their faces. And they were averse. Now this aqaba, uqubat, shadidul iqab. This is a punishment. So Allah punished them. فَآقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ And this is a punishment that nifaq, the seeds of nifaq and hypocrisy have been sowed in their hearts. This is the punishment that they have got in this world. فَآقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ I shiver at these words when I apply these words to the Pakistani Muslim nation. May Allah save us from that. That this nifaq will remain until they meet their Lord on the day of judgment. They will not be rid of it. Due to their going back on their words the weak promise they had made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and because of their telling the lie, they never intended what they were saying at that time. These words are 100% applicable to the Muslim Ummah. We prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least I was, in my early youth, I was a high school student, but I, I was an active worker of Muslim Students Federation. I was also a worker of Pakistan movement. 
I was general secretary of Hisar District Muslim Schools Federation. One of the two delegates who went to the conference, very big conference, which was held in Lahore, Habibia Hall of Islamia College in 1946, in which from every district of Punjab only two delegates were invited. And I was one of the two from the district of Hisar, which is now in Haryana. So we know how we were praying, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah save us, deliver us from the slavery of the Britishers and also save us from the coming slavery of the Hindus. And we shall establish your deen. We shall make Pakistan, you know, a cradle of Islamic civilization, a lighthouse, an example for the whole of humanity, that this is the just social order. This is the real mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He has given the just social order, the political, social, economic system based on justice, fair play, equity. That is it. So that is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He gave this just social order through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what we have done, we went back upon our words. We took to the luxuries, only worldly pursuits. So this is going back on the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have written a book, Istikam in Pakistan, and I have proved that it was just a miracle, the establishment of Pakistan coming to be, into being of Pakistan. Nobody could hope it. Even the topmost Muslim League leaders, they thought that this is just a bargaining tactic. We are demanding this, but maybe we settle for less. And Qaidi Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah settled for less when he accepted the cabinet mission plan that India will remain one, which will be composed of three zones with one central government. Three zones will be there for ten years. But after 10 years, every zone will have a right to secede. That was the plan for at least 10 years. Qaidi Adam Muhammad Ali Jinnah had gone back from his demand of an independent Pakistan. But Allah gave, no, take independent Pakistan. And then we shall see what you do. Whether you prove true to your words or you go back. Now what is this nifar that we are having today? Number one, which I call nifaq e bahami this unity, nifaq, the nation dissolved into nationalities. It was one nation. Now it stands dissolved and divided into nationalities. And number two, the crisis of moral values. There are two ahadis, very important. Both are muttafaqun alayh. According to the one, the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is narrated by Abu Hurairah, رضي الله عنه, آيت المنافق سلاسن, إذا حدث كذبا, وإذا وعد أخلفا, وإذا تؤمن أخانا. These are the three signs, three symptoms of the disease of nifaq. Whenever he speaks, he tells a lie. Whenever he makes a promise, he breaks it. Whenever he is trusted, he betrays the trust. And you know, this hadith in the Sahih of Imam Muslim has additional words. وَإِنْ سَامَا وَصَلَّا وَزَامَا أَنَّهُ مُسْلِمٌ He is such a person, he prays, and he, you know, keeps fast, and he thinks himself to be a Muslim, but he is a munafiq hundred percent. And we can look to our society. Whosoever is, how, ever, how much, higher he is placed, the more he is dishonest, the more he is a liar, the more important among, amongst, the more important people are, the more they are, they have the, the, these three qualities. So this is actually the diagnosis. Fihe zikrukum, there is an ayah in Surah al -Anbiya. we have sent down our book, and in this book, your mention is also present. And there's the hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, narrated by Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Prophet once said, there's, there's going to be a very big tribulation, very big fitna. Innaha satakuna fitna. Tarmai. Ali says, radiallahu ta'ala an, I asked, mal makhraju min ya Rasulullah, what will be the way out? What will be the exit from that fitna? 
And then the Prophet replied, Kitabullah, Fihi khabaru ma qablakum, wa nabaw ma baadakum, wa hukmu ma baynakum. The only way to get out from fitna is this book of Allah. It contains the news of the people who were before you. And it contains the news of those who will be coming after you. And it contains the judgment and final word, final verdict in all the disputes which may arise among you. So then these three ayat, every Pakistani Muslim should make it a point to remember them. Because they 100% apply to us, not to other countries. Other countries existed as such before. Before they were taken by the colonialists, then, you know, they, they were just freed. But Pakistan's case is absolutely different. It was a new country which came into existence. So actually, and it was established in the name of Islam. Pakistan ka maklab kya? La ilaha illallah. What does Pakistan mean? There is no God except Allah. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ آهَدَ اللَّهِ لَئِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَنَصَّدَّقَنَّ وَلَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ بَخِلُوا بِهِ وَتَوَلَّوْا وَهُمْ عُرِدُونَ فَعَاقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ Allah, may Allah forbid, may Allah, you know, deliver us from this at least. We, you know, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not إِلَىٰ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ He should give us the courage to get out of this hypocrisy. بِمَا أَخْلَفُ اللَّهَ مَا وَعَدُوهُ وَبِمَا كَانُوا يَقْسِبُونَ أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُوا سِرَّهُمْ وَنَجْمَاهُمْ نَجْوَاهُمْ Don't they know that Allah knows what is hidden in their hearts and chests and what they do when they are, you know, counseling privately, najwa, secret counseling, secret meetings, secret plannings. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ And verily and certainly, Allah knows all the unseen. الَّذِينَ يَلْمِذُونَ الْمُطَوِّعِينَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي الصَّدَقَاتِ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ إِلَّا جُهْدَهُمْ فَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنْ سَخِرَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَهُمْ عَزَابٌ عَلِيمٌ Now another two-pronged attack of these hypocrites on the Muslims. Those who defame Those people from among the Muslims who voluntarily give and contribute money because it's a very well-known fact of the history and seerah that before commencing the journey of Tabuk, the Prophet ﷺ asked for donations. A general appeal. It is going to be a very big expedition. 3,000 people are moving. 30,000. So all the, you know, rations are required and all the things and then the, then arms are required. So contribute, contribute, whatsoever you can. And you know, Hazrat Abu Bakr contributed everything. Left nothing at home, nothing. Not even a needle, everything he contributed. Hazrat Umar, he, you know, divided all his belongings into two parts and in one part he contributed. But you know, one man Muslims were bringing all these things. Now these, these felt, you know, very sorry that they can't, they couldn't do it, these munafiqeen. But they used to pass the marks, oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. They want to show off. They want, you know, to show off to the people that they are very philanthropist. So that was one-sided. On the other side, there were Muslims who were very poor, who couldn't help, who could donate much. There was one Sahabi who worked for the whole night as a laborer for a Jew. He was, you know, getting out water from the well and irrigating his garden. And in the morning he got some dates as the reward, as the wage of the night labor, divided into two parts. Half of it he gave it to the family and half he brought to Muhammad sallallahu Now on them they mocked, oh yes, without this, this expedition could not be undertaken. Yes, yes, this is most important. So they were attacking the Muslims both ways. Those who were contributing generously, they are showing off. And those who brought such meager contribution, oh, without the, that actually, it's very correct. This expedition couldn't be undertaken without this. But what was the, the uh, action of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He said, okay, you spread all these dates over the whole of this heap. In the balance of Allah, 
they carry more weight than all this heap. Because it is actually the intention that Allah sees. What are the intentions? His way, his weighing, you know, uh, is different from our weighing. His weighing standard is different. Alladina yalmizun al mutawwiina min al mu'minin. On the one side, they defame them and slander them that they are showing off. Min fis sadaqat alladina la yajiduna illa johdau. And as for those who have nothing except their hard earnings, fayas karuna min ho. They balk at them and they cut jokes with them. Sakhir Allahu min hum. Actually, Allah is mocking at them. The same words that we have in Surah Al-Baqarah, second section. Allahu yastahzeo bihim wa yamudduhum fi tuyanihim ya'mahoon. Actually, Allah is mocking at them. Wa lahum azabun alim. For them is a very painful torment. Now, the harshest words, the hardest verdict which is much more than the one which appeared in Surah An-Nisa. What was it in Surah An-Nisa? إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ These munafiqeen, these hypocrites will be in the lowest part of Jahannam. Lower than the kuffar. Here, Allah is telling Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, اسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ أَوْ لَا تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ اِن تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ سَبْعِينَ مَرَّةً فَلَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ You ask forgiveness for them or you don't ask forgiveness for them. Be it known to you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, that even you ask forgiveness for them seventy times, Allah is not going to forgive them. ذَلَكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ This is because they have disbelieved, they have blasphemed, although not legally. Legally they are still Muslims. Only the veneer is there. Underneath that veneer, all wood had been eaten by the, by the moth or the termite, whatever it is. ذَلَكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقِينَ And Allah is not going to rightly guide these people who are transgressors, who are rebellious. فَلِهَا الْمُخَلَّفُونَ بِمَقَعْدِهِمْ خِلَافَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ People who were left behind, who were given the leave, okay, if this is, you know, this is the condition, you are, you are in a very harsh situation, if you can't go, okay, keep back, hold back. Now they were rejoicing, you know, that we could easily deceive Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَلِهَا الْمُخَلَّفُونَ بِمَقَعْدِهِمْ خِلَافَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ And they are sitting back. After Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَكَرِي هُوَ يُجَاهِدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they didn't like, they disliked to strive hard in the way of Allah with their bodies, with their lives and with their belongings. وَقَالُوا لَا تَنْفِرُوا فِي الْحَرْمِ And they said, don't go out in this heat. Look to the weather. It's so hot. Scorching heat. You have gone crazy. You know, they were saying to their brothers, people, you know, who were related to them from among the Mormons, where are you going? You also go and, and you know, present a lame excuse. And who are Uzun? Uh, he is just, you know, years and nothing else. He will accept your apology. He will grant you leave. Why are you going in this scorching heat? And you have to traverse this whole area in this scorching heat. قَالُوا لَا تَنْفِرُوا فِي الْحَرْقِ قُلْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمْ عَشَدُّ حَرَّةً Tell them, the fire of hell is most fierce, the fiercest in heat. لَوْ كَانُوا يَفْقَهُونَ Would that they understand? Only if they had the understanding. فَلْيَذْحَكُوا قَلِيلًا وَلْيَبْكُوا كَسِيرًا So they should laugh little and weep much. You know what is going to be their end. They should start weeping. Start right now. Jazam bima kanu yaksibun. Being a recompense for what they have been earning. Fain rajaak Allahu ila taifatin minhum fustadhanuk alil khuruj. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, back to a party of them, that is, when you reach Madinah back, 
And if there is any another expedition in your lifetime, and if they fastazanuka lil khuruj, and if they ask your permission to go with you, go out, because when they saw that oh, even Heraclius, you know, he couldn't come forward, he held back. Muhammad came with flying colors, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So maybe that now, if another expedition, you know. Happens in your lifetime, they will come. Okay, we also want to go with you. فَإِنْ رَجَعَتَ اللَّهُ إلَى طَائِفَةٍ مِنْهُمْ فَاسْتَأْذَنُوكَ لِلْخُرُوجِ فَقُلْ لَنْ تَخْرُجُوا مَعِيَ أَبَدًا وَلَنْ تُقَاتِلُوا مَعِيَ عَدُوَّةً Tell them, oh no, you are not going to go out with me forever. You are barred, and you will never be fight fighting any enemy alongside with me. This thing is finished. Matter has been finished. In the kum ravi tum bil qurud awwala marra. You were pleased. You preferred to sit back the first time. Why this first time? This was the last time in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why first time? Because it was first time that going out to fight was obligatory. Failed. Before that, it was not obligatory. It was voluntary. There was persuasion, exhortation of all the sorts, but it was not obligatory. That is why nobody needed to come and apologize and present his excuses that I can't go due to this reason, I can't go to this reason. And that is why those who held back without getting permission, you know, the explanations were not, not called. But we find that in Rabi Tabuk, after coming back. The Prophet called everyone and asked, "Why didn't you go?" The explanations were called. So, because this was the first time that going to fight, going to war, was made obligatory. When you didn't go, now it is finished forever. Fakodu mal khalifi. Now keep sitting back with those who remain behind. ولا تصلي على أحد منهم مات. And now Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم never pray for any one of them when he dies. ولا تقوم على قبره. Never stand on their graves. إنهم كفروا بالله ورسوله. They have blasphemed. They have disbelieved. They have rejected. وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ They have died not as Muslims or Mormons, but actually as transgressors. وَلَا تُعْجِبْ كَامْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أُولَادُهُمْ And you should not be impressed by their wealth and their sons and daughters and progeny. Because these people loved this world, the life of this world. They were devoting all their time For earning money, earning money, gathering it, not spending it in the way of Allah, so they were rich. Now a person who is devoting his time for the cause of Deen, serving the Deen of Allah, propagating the message, so he cannot have more time to earn. These people, they had more time. They loved wealth, and so they were rich. Now a rich man becomes prominent in the society. You know, and people look to him and listen to him whenever he says something. He is important. He is a wealthy person. He has so many heads with him, so many sons. So actually, this was a very, you know, important matter at that time in the tribal era. But oh, Muhammad, you please don't get impressed. Wala tojib ka walhu wala aladu. This ayah has been, you know. It came at ayah number fifty-five of this very surah with a very, you know, minor, negligible difference. وَلَا تَعْجِبْكَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أُولَادُهُمْ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُعَزِّبَهُمْ بِهَا فِي الدُّنْيَا Actually, what Allah intends is, intends is to give them the punishment on account of these very things in the in the life of this world. They will be tormented psychologically due to this wealth. Only a small loss, and they can't sleep for so many nights. What is it? They are being tormented and chastised 
on account of their wealth. A son, and he has done this, he has gone, you know, in another direction. He is not taking to the direction which you wanted him to take. So he is a source of agony for you. So Allah intends to give him, the, the, give them this punishment in this world through this wealth and their sons. This is the punishment. What does And Allah wants that their souls should go out of their bodies. They should die. Wahum kafirun in this very condition of kufr and unbelieving. And when a surah is sent down, addressing the Muslims, have faith in Allah and strive hard with His Messenger, side by side, strengthening Him. Now those who are resourceful, who have everything with them, they come to you to ask permission. To leave, to beg for leave. وَقَالُوا زَرْنَا نَكُلْ مَعَ الْقَاعِدِينَ And said, and they say, please, just leave us. So we should be with the people who are sitting back, staying at Medina. رَضُوا بِأَنْ يَكُونُوا مَعَ الْخَوَالِفِ They preferred and loved to remain with the women who were staying back. Because, you know, this going to war was not obligatory for women. So women were staying back at Medina. They preferred to be with them. And now a seal has been set on their hearts. But they don't have any understanding. The real faculty of understanding has been taken away from them. A seal has been set. These words we'll find again repeated, you know, in Surah Al-Munafiqoon. They did come to believe, they did taste, you know, Iman. But at then they went back. We have read that ayah in Surah Al-Nisa. Inna ladhin amanu summa kafar, summa amanu summa kafar, summa zdadu kufran. So that was the position. Lakin in Rasulullah al-Ladhin ba'ahu, on the contrary, the messenger of Allah and those who have the faith with him, who have come to believe with him, Jahadu Bayamwalim Wan Fusim. They strived hard with their belongings and their lives. Mawlai Kalahumul Khairat. And they are those for whom they are all good things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mawlai Kahumul Muflihun. And they are those who will have the triumph, the final triumph, and they will prosper. Allah has prepared and decorated for them the gardens underneath which rivers are flowing and they will live there, stay there forever, forever. Zalik al Fadul Azim, and surely this is the greatest triumph and this is the greatest success. Wajal Mu'azzaruna min al Arab. Now there were two types of Munafiqeen. Up till now, the munafiqeen of Medina have been discussed. Now, a mention is being made of the munafiqeen from the from among the Arab, from the Bedouins. Bajal muazziruna min al-Arab liyuzina lahu wa qad al-lazina kafaru kazab Allah wa Rasoola. And also, those of the munafiqeen came to you, bajal muazziruna min al-Arab from among the Desert Arabs also, people came to beg for permission and leave, not to go on this expedition. And they also held back and they just lied to Allah and His Messenger. Very soon to, them, to those of them who have really committed kufr, although not legal kufr, real kufr. For them there will be a very painful torment. There's no blame. Haraj, blame. There is no blame on the weak or the sick 
or all those who don't have anything to spend. Because they have to go to Tabuk. They need some, some animal to ride, some camel, something of this sort. Two or three at least, they can join together in one camel, but they have to have some camel. But they don't have any resources. So these are the three conditions. Less out of Dwafa, Walar al Marwa, no blame on the weak. Someone is too old to go. Okay, he is exempted. He is too old. Or someone is sick. Although he is young, but he is sick. Walar al Nazina la yajiduna ma yunfikuna harajun iza nasahur illahi wa rasulahi. So long as they are sincere to Allah and His Messenger. Allah knows it. The battle is with Allah and He knows it. Who is sincere and who is telling a lie? Who is making lame excuses? وَمَعَنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ Over such muhsineen, good doers, people who have their Islam in a beautiful way, who have reached that level of Islam, on them there is no way of blame. وَاللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ And verily Allah is forgiving, merciful. وَلَعَلَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا مَا طَوْكَ لِتَحْمِلَهُمْ In the same way, there is no blame on those who came to you so that you, you should mount them, you should provide them some, some animal to ride. Kunta, when they came to you with this request, that I am ready to go. I am not sick. I am fit. I am ready to go. But please arrange, you know, some convenience. Kunta la ajidu ma ahmedukum alayhi. And you said, I don't find anything on which I can mount you. Tawalla wa ayunuhum tafidu min adam. They returned back and their eyes were overflowing with tears. Haganan Allah yajidu ma yunfikun. Due to the grief that they don't have what they can spend. They don't have the resources. So these people, there's no blame. إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى النَّذِينَ يَسْتَعْدِنُوكَ وَهُمْ أَغْنِيَا All the blame is to come to those people who beg your permission and leave not to go with you. And they are, while they are rich, they are resourceful. They have everything. They can arrange the rations. They can arrange conveyance. رَضُوا بِأَنْ يَكُونُ مَعَ الْخَوَالِفِ They were happy. They preferred it. They loved to be with those women who who were left behind, who held back. But Taba Allahu ala kulubi. Again, the same words. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put a set a seal on their hearts. From la yalamun. Now they don't have the real knowledge. They are worldly wise, but this is not the real wisdom. The real wisdom is of person who knows that the real life is the life of the hereafter. They are worldly wise, very cunning. They can harm and they can see, they can deceive and they can do this. Everything, they are very worldly wise. But the real knowledge they don't have. Ya tadiruna ilaykum idha rajatum ilayhim. They are presenting their excuses when you have returned to them. Now this is in plural. Because these people had to please their brother Muslims, you know, Mu'mineen. Because now the Mu'mins, the three Mu'mins, they had now known that these people, they are, they didn't go. And they knew it, that the excuses they presented were lame, baseless. So now they had to go to them also. Oh, no, no, please don't be mistaken. Please don't doubt our sincerity. Actually, you don't know. This was the problem with me. This was the problem with me. And that was the hindrance. يَا تَذِرُونَ إِلَيْكُمْ إِذَا رَجَعْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ قُلْ لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَمْ قَدْ نَبْعَانَ اللَّهُ مِنْ أَخْبَارِكُمْ O Muslims, you tell them plainly, although they might be your friends or relatives or so on, tell them plainly, we are not going to believe in you. Because قَدْ نَبْعَانَ اللَّهُ مِنْ أَخْبَارِكُمْ Allah has already informed us of your news. These, you know, ayat have been revealed. Now everything had been, you know, made clear for us. Now we can see through your game. So we are not going to believe in you. But okay. Now in future, 
in the in the times to come allah will see your deeds what you are doing wa rasuluhu and his his messenger also don't come to us you have to please the messenger of allah and you have to please allah wa sayyara allah amalakum wa rasuluhu thumma turadduna ila alim al ghaib wa shahada then you will be returned to him who is the door of all the seen and the unseen that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa yunabbiukum bima kuntum ta'malun and he will inform you fully of what you had been doing sayahlifuna billahi lakum idha qalabtu bilayhim litaridu anhum very soon they will swear by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you when you return to them litaridu anhum so that you just ignore them you leave them alone you don't bring them to task you don't buy caught them they will love what they will like faridu anum okay o oh muslims you just leave them alone you just ignore them innahum fitsun they are wicked wretched material it's better to turn your faces from it wa ma wa hum jahannam and their abode is the hell jazam bima kanu yaksibun and it will be the recompense for what they had been earning ya lifuna lakum li tarda anhum o muslims they are swearing by allah before you so that you become pleased with them you don't remain angry with them you don't hate them you don't boycott them ya lifuna lakum li tarda anhum fa in tarda anhum now listen if you get pleased with them find allah la yarda an alqawm alfasiqin allah is not going to be pleased with such transgressors al arab wa ashaddu kufran wa nifaqa this is a very important issue now which is being discussed and please note it here because regarding the misinterpretation of an ayah which is to follow i have to refer to this ayah al arab wa ashaddu kufran wa nifaqa these bedouins these wandering arabs the desert arabs you know two types of people were there settled in cities makka madina yasrab as was called before hijra taif yambo jadda these were the cities but you know most of the people you know they were the desert arabs so al arab ashaddu kufran wa nifaqa these you know arab these bedouins they are hardest in disbelief as well as hypocrisy why it will come become clear wa aqdaru allah ya'lamu hudud ma anzal allah and more likely not to know the limits of that which allah has revealed to his messenger ala rasulihi wallahu alimul hakim and verily allah is all knowing all wise why actually because they didn't have time to spend with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the muslims at madina they had time they prayed with him they had the companionship so the, actually they were listening listening to his friday sermons every week and on additional occasions then different time they were coming and meeting him and seeing him so actually this influence you know this baraka of the presence of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this bliss of the sohbah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was more available to people who were living in madina and these people you know they had embraced islam but they were living in desert far away so they only sometimes it happened that they visited madina and they saw the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and availed of his presence but you know the degree was different wa min al arab man yattakhidhu ma yunfiqu maghraban wa yatarabbasu bikum al dawair and among these desert arabs there are people who take what they have to spend as fine if they were made to pay zakah oh, okay but they took it as a fine because real belief real iman was not there they had to do it because now they had embraced islam they had to pay the zakah but they thought you know just you know their emotions you know their sentiments were as if paying some fine 
waiting for some turn of events over you. There may, there may come a turn of events and you Muslims may be defeated by some other, other force and then we are relieved of this fine, you know, which we have to pay every year. Alayhim da'iratus saw. On them will be the evil turning of events. There will be a turning of fortunes and turning of events. But it will be evil for them. Glory is to come to Allah and His Messenger. And Islam. فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيُّ عَلِيمٌ And Allah is all hearing, all knowing. وَمِنَ الْعَرَابِ But they are not all the Arabs. All the desert Arabs are not of that type. وَمِنَ الْعَرَابِ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَلِيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ They are half among them. Those who believe in Allah have full faith, full iman in Allah and the last day. وَيَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ قُرَبَاتٍ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ And he, whatever he has to spend, he takes them as if it is the means of getting nearer and nearer to Allah. So they spend heartily, willingly. Because these things, you know, these alms and charities and this zakah and this sadaqat will, you know, bring us closer and closer and closer, nearer to Allah. وَسَلَوَاتِ الرَّسُولِ And also, they will be a mean of getting the prayers and blessings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala innaha qurbatullah. Let it be known that this is actually a means of getting nearer and nearer to Allah. All these, what they are spending for the cause of Allah. Sayyudkhiluhum Allahu fi rahmatihi. Very soon Allah will admit them to his mercy. Inna Allah ghafoorur raheem. And verily Allah is ghafoor and raheem. He is forgiving, merciful. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ Now this, you know, part, a few ayat, beginning with this ayat, they are very important. They give us a classification of the Muslims at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And we must understand this classification because it has a psychological background. And you know, whenever there is some call, a movement, a dawah, a movement to establish Islam, you know, people's response will be parallel to the responses that are enumerated here. So to have a deep insight, just we had the ayah, وَمَنْ يُتْعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَائِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالسِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَائِكَ رَفِيقًا This is a classification. Four levels. Four grades. Topmost, the Anbiya, the Prophets. Baseline, Salihin. In between, Shuhada and Siddiqin. Most nearer to Anbiya to, uh, are Siddiqin. Then, the Shuhada. And I explained that ayah at that time. And I have written a, an article also on this. Actually, these things are not fully understood by most of the translators and even the exegists, even the mufassirin. Because, you know, you have to have a background of psychology. Why these grades? What are the basic differences? What are the family, what are the personality structures which relate to these? So, actually, if you have that background, then you can fully understand who is a Siddiq and why is a Siddiq? Who is a Shaheed and why is a Shaheed? In the same way here, As-Sabiqun al-Awwaloon, topmost. After them comes, Wal-Ladheena Tabaruhum Bi-Ihsan. They are the uppermost two cadres. Then we shall find the lowermost, and they are the Munafiqun. In between there are two levels. One which is adjacent to Muttabi'een Bi-Ihsan and one which is more adjacent to the Munafiqeen. So, one, two, three, four, five levels. There in that ayah we had four levels. فَأُولَائِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالسِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ And also because, you know, this Nabuwa, prophethood, could not be attained 
It was always given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So actually there were three cardinals. Because Nabuwa, it was Wahhabi. It was never Iqtisabi. It couldn't be achieved. It was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So three levels, Salihin, Shuhada, Siddiqin. Here we have five. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْحَارِ وَالْأَنْصَارِ And the foremost, that is the first to embrace Islam from among the muhajireen as well as ansar. This is the topmost. وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُهُمْ بِعِسَانِ And those who followed them with the best of intentions, in the best way. Two cardinals. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Allah has been pleased with them, and they are pleased with Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And this is the highest cardinal, you know. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. There can be no higher level than this. A mutual pleasure, mutual friendship. ولاية. الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور. Allah is their valley, protector and protector in friend, and they are the protect, they are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same way, mutual pleasure. But there are two cardinals. Now this is the basic difference. You know, the level of strength of will, willpower. It is not equal in all the human beings. There's a very good, you know, couplet in Persian. Nahar zan zanasto nahar mard mard. Khuda pan jangus yaksa na kar. Every woman is not a woman and every man is not a man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made these five fingers equal. So actually there are differences. Allah has created people. So there are people who have strength. And power, powerful will. They are ready to sacrifice everything. There are others who wait. Let us see what happens. They recognize the truth. It is correct. But let someone else come first. If he plunges into this river, I will also plunge. But you know, they need someone going ahead. They don't have the courage to be the first. Because whosoever is the first is risking more. But when somebody, somebody has taken the initiative, now it, it appears to be a bit safer. But, but they have recognized the truth, all right. But they lack the courage somewhat. So they had to wait for some time. And they followed in their footsteps, in the footsteps of those who took the lead, who took the initiative. So these are the two levels, but both are at the highest. Because recognize, recognition of the truth, that was, that came equally to the both of them. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَارِينَ وَالْأَنْسَارِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ تَبَعُوهُمْ Followed them. They took the courage. They started. They took the initiative. Now, some people who, who are not courageous enough, equal to them, they also took the courage. Okay, when he is going, I can also go. رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Allah has been pleased with them, and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَدْرِي تَحْتَ أَهْلَ الْحَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared and decorated the gardens for them, underneath which rivers are flowing. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدَا And they will, they shall live there, abide forever, forever. ذَلِكَ الْفَضُ الْعَظِيمُ Surely, this is the Greatest success. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم. الله أكبر الله أكبر. The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA. is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. 
A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.